Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cabaret Secrets. My name's Gary Williams, and today I'm joined by one of my best friends on the cruise ships. Only on the cruise ships, though, not in real life. His name's John Evans, and he's a fantastic comic. John, welcome to Cabaret Secrets. Hello, welcome. Is it a secret? Uh, it's only me and you know about it, is it? And to, uh, Right now it is, but within about ten minutes, everybody will know okay. everything. Not just about us, but about the craft of telling jokes for cabaret artists. That's what I want to talk to you about because the people that are listening to this are mostly singers who are developing uh, or wanting to improve their cabaret acts. And a lot of... I, I always tell people one of the most important aspects of the show is what they say. You can even have not necessarily the best voice. You could... As long as you pick the right songs that people can relate to, it's the most important thing is what you say, how you link the songs together. And I know when I first started doing this, I wanted to be funny. I wanted to get a reaction from people. I wanted to tell jokes or anecdotes or something to get a laugh and it took me a long time to find the right way of doing it for me that fitted with my act so my first question to you is do you think anybody can tell a joke i think um i think an audience needs to understand what they're going to go in and see i think it can be confusing sometimes if a singer does a joke you know with a beginning and a middle and an end almost i mean i know you tell a lot of anecdotal stories which is great and they fit better i think um so anyone can tell a joke but i think it's if you can make it sound more anecdotal than that i think is a key if you're a vocalist because people go in and it's it kind of catches people off guard and a lot of people might say it's like the other way around i personally i can't stand it when a comic opens up with a song you know and does it seriously i mean if he's going to do something funny with the song fine when they come on and start off with some song, it just makes me think, what are you doing? You know, we've come to see a comic, what are you doing? So that's, yeah, I think anyone can do it, but I think it would try and make it more anecdotal, maybe that might be a... As opposed to gags. Yeah, so as opposed yeah. to my mother-in-law or uh, doing some yeah. gag. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. And what I, what I try and do is I, I'll find, sometimes I'll find a gag that I really like, but I will... I, I say contextualise it. I'll put I'll put it into a story. I'll make up a story. So when I was, you know, my first gig that I ever did, or the first time I was on this ship, or yeah. the last time I worked with this musical director, he said to me, uh, "La la la." And I try I set up a scene. I make it sound very natural and conversational, and then the gag's still there, but it's sort of kind of just sandwiched in between this nice little personal uh, uh, story. If you can make it, as you say, conversational, it'll make it more relaxed for you telling it as well. You know, you'll be more sort of just like. Well, we're using the word all the time. Conversational. I mean, there's nothing worse than um, oh, well, maybe I'm maybe I'm giving away too many secrets now. I don't know. It's a personal <laughs> I want them thing. All. Tell it's me. a personal thing. I think um, a female vocalist will go out and it looks stunningly wonderful, you know, and then um, she looks great in a dress and she looks fantastic. It's a formal evening. There's the orchestra behind her, and there's nothing worse than when she finishes a song saying, "Hey, girls, hey, I've squeezed in here. I've got these fancy knickers on. They hold everything in." <laughs> and you think, "No, sorry, you've broken the you've broken the magic there now." Yeah. yeah. And you know what's interesting is that, and I learned this a long a long time ago, is that just because something you say can get a laugh, it doesn't mean to say that you should do it. No, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, sometimes. I have to be very careful because if I'm at a bar or sat at a bar and a drink, you know, you can just talk and it's all funny and make funnies and crack funnies and things, but you've got to have this little thing on the other side of your head <laughs> when you actually perform and saying, no, don't go down there, John, because you're going to have, it's going to be a comedy cul-de-sac and you're going to have to reverse <laughs> out and the audience will hear this beep, beep, beep as you're reversing out, you know. I mean, as I, have, I have a line, I don't do it anymore um, and it was my wife who said to me, why do you do that line? It sets my my skin crawls you know when you do it and it makes 50% of the audience not like you and I used to do it within a minute of walking on stage you know I used to say um, good evening I said great to see so many beautiful ladies in here tonight there are some ugly ones but you know who you are so I won't point you out you know <laughs> yes. and I mean and okay. it's funny it's, I suppose it's it funny. Is. I suppose but like immediately 50% of the audience think well that's not very nice <laughs> I, you know and my wife said to me why do you do that line and I remember driving back from a gig thinking she doesn't know what she's talking about because she's in the audience, so she is the absolute judge. Yeah. You know, she is the absolute kingpin of it all. Do you think that any singer can put some humour in the show, or do you think some people should just leave it well alone? No, I think anybody can. I just think it just it depends on how much truth is behind it. You know, if if you if you deliver it with truth, and you know, you it becomes a is that, that wedding and conversation, mm. then. You're just drawing people in, aren't you? Mm. You know, and you, 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 your personality comes through. And if you've got a, 
a bubbly personality. There's nothing worse than suppressing that when you're on stage. You think, well, I'm a singer, so I can't really mm. go out and be me. You but know, what if you have the opposite and you, you just you're not really funny <laughs> in real life? Well, I mean, you know, I, you're not the kind of person that would if you're with your friends or with a group of people at a dinner party or something. If you, you're the kind of person that just recoils in horror at having to say something funny, uh, do you think those kind of people can uh, you know change not. their personality? I would probably not. I would say when you say it like that, you know, I mean, and again, it depends what what kind of. I mean, I don't know. You know, you you use some great anecdotes in there. You know, and. Uh, they're, they're, you may you may say that the disguised gags becoming anecdotes and everything, but it doesn't come across like that. Mm. And I don't no, I don't think I, I don't know. I think if if you don't feel comfortable with it, it will come across. And if you're doing it and you don't feel comfortable, it's like when you if you sing a song and it's a great song, but it's just a little bit too much of a reach within a range. Mm. I'm speaking to a person who I don't know anything about singing, mm. but if it's just just the very top of your range, you think... You've oh, heard me I do, might, what uh, kind of fool am I? Well, you know, there we are. I wanted to bring that up. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you. it's a bit awkward here now, folks, but there we are. No, you know, that's the thing, you just think, ooh, do you want to be doing that? Because yeah. everything else is so perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe it's the same. Maybe yeah. it's the same as telling gags, I don't know. Yeah. Where do people find gags or anecdotes? Where do you, where do you find, where do people find material? Well, a long time ago, you'd, you'd hear a gag... And then it would be, you'd be, it'd be yours for, you know, months. You know, you'd hear a gag, you'd, you'd change it around a little bit and make it fit into a situation that you were on, you know, you, where you were working. you think, well, I'll make that fit into that routine there. But now with texting and things and emails and stuff like this, you know, uh, Facebook and Twitter, people can think of a line and then, bang, it's gone worldwide. So you go out with this new line thinking, I'm the only one who's heard it. Two-thirds of the audience have had a text it to them you know, yeah. half an hour before, a topical gag. So they, they go around really quickly. Listening to people, I like I listen to people um, talking at the bar, you know, talking in the buffet queue maybe, I don't know, in the line for the buffet. There, and they can pick up little things that they say, you know, and... Um, I told you the other day, I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell our listeners to this thing. I, I told you this the other day. I was sitting in the, in the, in the Lido, the, the, the cafe on the ship, and this is true, just as I'm saying it now. I went back to this table. There's obviously a young lad, probably about nine years old, chatting to his granddad, and his granddad is trying to educate the kid. We're in Norway, in the Norwegian fields, and the granddad says to the kid, lot of sex in Norway. Yes. <laughs> and the kid says, sex? And the granddad says, yes. Sex, religious sex, and the kid says, "Religious sects," <laughs> and the grandma said, "Sects, s e c t s, sects, religious sects." I couldn't eat my soup. <laughs> I was laughing. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I told you a story the other evening. We were having dinner, and I I was on a ship, uh, which will remain nameless, but I was on the ship, and I went out for a drink when I finished, and I went into the bathroom. Um, I was outside this nightclub, but I went into the bathroom and closed the door of the cubicle. And proceeded to start, like we all do, you know. And just then the door flew open, and I was mortified, thinking, You fool, John, you haven't locked the door. So I reached forward to lock the door, apologising to the guy in the doorway. And he was apologising to me for being stupid to not, you know, sort of the door. And I was thinking, You fool. And as I'm reaching forward to lock the door, he shut the door, and I'm reaching forward to lock the door, and then all of a sudden the door flew open again, and I'm still sat there on the toilet, you know. And <laughs> he looked at me, it's the same bloke in the doorway, and he said, Hey, smashing show, by the way. <laughs> And you just think, <laughs> I had no CDs to sell him, I had to sign, you know. But yeah, and so I've told that, you know, there's an anecdote, and I've told it, but there's a whole thing about, well, the situation, you know, do you, do you want to talk you about really that? Do yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, this is it. Yeah, yeah. It's a funny story, but where do you draw the line? Yeah. There's also, like, there's a, there's a knowledge of, um, a singer will have a great knowledge of which songs to sing and when, and I suppose somebody does funnies would have a, an idea yeah. of, like, you know, yeah. you know, I've seen singers... Do funnies and I th and I do th sit there sometimes and think, oh no, they're not going to tell this, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, you th and they, even if they tell it well, you think, whoa, that's too far. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe there is something in not doing it. Do you think it's easier to be funny when you've got a regional accent, particularly one like yours? Okay, that's interesting. I do. Yeah, I think it's. I think a regional accent makes you more. It sounds a lot warmer and a lot rounder. Some way, I don't know why. Mm. I just think it. I always think it does, you know, and it does lend itself. But I'm my accent's very watered down now, and it's become very. I can barely understand a word you're saying, really. Well, yeah, <laughs> this is Radio Three. This is going on. Isn't it? And um, um, what was it before it was watered down? Just grunts. It was. Mm, pardon. <laughs> no, I used to. I, and I, 
so now mine, I, I mean, it, it was always watered down because in Liverpool we have a very Scouse accent, strong accent from the people on the other side of the water. Mm. Uh, and on the Wirral, where I live, um, we're considered to be quite posh. We're not, you know. Well, naturally, I can see that. Well, yes. And um, so one speaks with one's, you know... One speaks with one in better. With, with plums in one's mouth, yes. so, so to speak. I'm quite lucky in that respect. But I still had this accent that people say, oh, he's from Liverpool, you know, and he's, so... Yeah, I think it does... They kind of exp- almost expect you to be funny. just well. with the, the Well, and it's also this thing about the Northern accent as well, like uh, I'm a big fan of Alan Bennett or, or oh, okay, Victoria yeah. Wood. And yeah, when yeah. she's doing the... There's just these lines... It, it, you can't imagine them working as well on someone with a nice, clean RP accent. This is the thing, isn't it? You know, I mean, there are some people, but you see, they lend themselves, the, the, the accent will lend itself to being, um, like Stephen Fry, for example, is extremely funny. That's true, yeah. Um, and there's another comic, I can't remember his name now, a big tall guy, and he plays on the fact he's very English and very correct when he speaks, and he plays a sarcasm card, you know, mm, and mm, mm. looks down on everybody and, you know, that kind of thing. I can't remember his name, but Stephen Fry's hilariously funny. I mean, Paul Merton's got a very, you know, yeah. southern accent, but it's a regional accent, isn't it? It's not, yeah. you know, plummy kind of thing, and he's yeah. funny. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think it would, it does help, does help. It breaks down a barrier, maybe, maybe breaks down a barrier. Maybe, I, I don't know if it's something about the, the timing or the, the, just the, the way that an accent timing. skips along. <laughs> <laughs> you talked before about finding material... Uh, and you said at one time you'd hear a gag and then you'd yeah, do yeah. it, you'd make it your own, or now you see something on, on Twitter. Uh, but it, I know from speaking to comics over the years, there's a whole thing, a rivalry about nicking material. What, mm-hmm. what's the, how does that all work? Because uh, you know, unless we're writing stuff for ourselves or paying someone else to write a gag for us, which is probably going to end up on Twitter anyway, if we, I mean, I might hear someone do a gag or I hear something on the radio, what, can I nick it, can I do it or not? I think it's a funny situation. If it's published or it's on a TV show, it's it, what you're going to do. You know, you, you don't want to do it. You know, you don't want to do it. But and I, so I don't do it. If it's on a TV show or in a book or whatever, I try my best not to do it. And I thank you know, thankfully at the minute I don't. I don't do it. I say at the minute that makes it sound like I've been doing it for years and suddenly stopped. Well, I've noticed a lot of your act is well, mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only the Cole Porter section. <laughs> no, I uh, only the uh, rubbish stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I. Um, so I don't think you should do it. No, I don't think you should do it. And I don't think it's it's look it's not looked upon well, obviously, by other professionals. Even stuff that's. I mean, I, I'm surprised what you say because if if I see you do some material mm. I, I, I'm clearly not going to nick that because mm. that's yours I've seen you do it yeah. people know you do it but if I've heard something on the radio or on the telly yeah. that would seem to me to be public domain that would seem to me well look everybody's heard it it's got to be mm. it's out there now it's public domain so if I use that no one can say hey that's my bit because you know the it's... thing to do is <coughs> excuse me the thing to remember is if you're going to do that right you need to try and make it your own by uh, changing it round a little bit to make it your own personality or your own stamp. And you also, in, in my opinion, I think you need to add on to it. Like, I used to think it was like Lego, you know, if you could, you take a bit, a bit or whatever it is, you take, well, I'll take, you know, that idea, and then you say, right, well, I'll mould it, and then I'll put a little bit more onto the end of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's how, and then before you know where you are, then you've developed a new section of a routine, you know, mm-hmm. it might be the same idea. I do a line about late news items, and I said, you know, uh, the Muslim cleric Abu Qatada has been sent to Jordan. And then you give a pause, and I say, you know, I mean, what's she going to do with him? <laughs> right? And now, I've been doing that gag for months, you know. You came up with it, you yeah, wrote it. Yeah, right? but, but the thing is, it's an, obvious, it's an obvious thing to talk about at the moment, because mm. it's in the news, and to me, it's an obvious gag. It's obvious, mm. even though she now wants to be called Katie Price, is it, mm. or whatever. I thought, well, will it still work? Will he say Casey Price? Uh, and it still works. still get to laugh. And then the other week, uh, on Have I Got News For You? Yes, um, or Mock The Week or something, Dara O'Brien said, Jordan has said yes to Abu Qatada. I mean, how desperate can that woman be? Mm. So there's the same gag, right? And I was doing the line a long time before, but... but he didn't nick it from me because he'd never seen me, you know. Mm-hmm. I'd never seen him do that line or whatever. So there's there's a prime example of how it can be misconstrued. I mean, I do, I've done routines and I've had other comics say to me, um, oh, that, that line you do there, that line, 
I've never heard it before, but it would really fit into my 15 minutes worth of mm, mm, that, mm. you know. And then I always say, hey, well, take it, you know, take the line and fit it in. Mm. And I don't, that's fine. That's kind know? of normal. Oh, people would say, that's, that's happened a few times. People would say, that's, they have the courtesy to say, Look can I have that bit? Fit in that little bit that I do, you know. And I've even gone to other comics, and I'm sure other comics have done the same thing. They've gone to other comics and said, I've got a line here that I do, and it will work great in that bit yeah, there. Yeah, that's nice. Huh? You know, um, so that's a nice thing. I'm surprised you say that, because when I've talked to a lot of comics, you are the exception, but I've talked to a lot of comics, and they seem to be forever bitching and moaning about people nicking their stuff, and I wrote this, and I came up with that, and so, you know, so-and-so is doing it, and so-and-so, well, he nicks everything, and they get really upset about it. It's a quite a hot topic. I just get over it. I just think, you know what? I'm working. I've got my gigs... I'm very happy to be working where I'm working. I'm very fortunate. So I just. You are. So <laughs> I noticed that you have CDs. Uh, you sell CDs yes. of your act. So it's all there recorded. Yeah. And, and so anybody can. So, you know, someone yeah. could. Another act or someone like me, a singer, could think, oh, he did a few good lines there, but I didn't write them down. So I could. Mm. You just don't do it because you'll get found out. You'll get found out, you mm. know. Is there a technique of telling a, a joke or an anecdote? Are there some tips which you can give? to people that can improve the way they tell a joke yeah less is more don't make it too wordy I heard somebody say a few weeks ago it's about getting to the punchline as quickly as possible I'd absolutely super, I'd, I'd support that definitely yeah um, less is more if you can use three words instead of six do it mm. you know what I mean um, and try not to I, I, have a, I have a big thing about repeating words in a, in a gag if you say one, if you say a word twice within two or three sentences, it needs trimming down. You know what I mean? Mm. And certain things, you know, sounds so daft and so anarchy, but I find certain inconsequential words will, will be funnier. <laughs> yes, than, than, no, you it's know. true. I don't know what it is, you know. Custard I, cream always I, makes me laugh. Well, they are, you know what I mean? But you'll find that in the comedy bible, bourbons are far funnier. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and got up all these, we'll let off the scale, yeah. you know. <laughs> That's right. uh, no, but so I mean, you know, you'll just change a number, you know, you'll change. I do a gag, I've been doing it for years about a multiple birth, and the tagline is 143 all out, and the last one was a duck. Well, this is a, such an old gag. I'm not making it, I'm not saying I wrote it and I'm comedy genius, I'm, I'm not. But if I said it, if I tell it differently, if I said 171, all out, and the last one was it won't, it won't work, you know. So I say 140, and I've said 143 all out. I've said it for years. Yeah, that's the number 143 yeah, all out. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Um, for, if you use a phone number in a gag, you'll find that for years you'll use the same phone number, you know, in the same wording of it. So you can, you, you, but less is more, and make sure it scans well and it it bounces. It's got to have a rhythm. Yeah, that's right. If you you know if you if, if, if you're singing a song that's badly written or difficult to sing. You know, because it's got a strange rhythm. It's it's hard. It's hard for you as a performer and hard for an audience who's only hearing it for the yeah, first yeah, time. Yeah. When I sing, I will have sections in my show. Yeah. And so the, the opening section might be what I consider the first three numbers. And that's all about coming on, hello, I'm here, so a number to make them feel comfortable and maybe something to get them involved a little bit. That's my opening section. Then I'll go into the next section. Totally right, yeah. That's how, that's how I do it. I, have, I, have, I call them bits, you know. Um, last week I was on a different ship altogether and I decided to flip the shows you know as a performer you'll develop an a show and a b show mm -hmm. as i call them mm -hmm. your a show is your, what you consider to be your strongest stuff so you go mm -hmm. out and do it and your b show is everything else is everything else yeah so um i decided to flip it around and opened up with the b show and did it and it was a great exercise it was really good maybe sometimes you know you think about doing that i used to work for P&O cruises an awful lot and you used to have to do three shows three separate shows and I remember thinking to myself now when I look back on three it, three yeah. how long uh th it used to be at least 30 minutes long mm. at least so I mean some nights I used to get to 25 and think oh my god I mean I'll be honest I was only I was so young these there was a lot at the beginning and a lot at the end of well isn't it been a nice day <laughs> uh, you know you look lovely love you look nice you know <laughs> and all that and so listen great day tomorrow don't forget and so I look back and I think my god that was awful mm -hmm. But it forces you to, to look for new bits and, and, and put stuff in, so that's always good too, you know. Any, any other little tips for anyone to, to, to go away with? I think st stay away from contentious subjects, you know that's what I mean? Good, if you yeah. don't feel comfortable talking about it, if you... Somebody said to me one time, if you're going to feel uncomfortable telling your, your mum or your dad or your nan... That's good. Don't do it. 
Yeah. You know, and even you, if it's really funny. Yeah. And if you need, I remember asking a cruise director once, will I, will, this, will I get away with this gag? And he said to me, if you need to ask me, then no. <laughs> it's true. Because what will happen is you'll half deliver it, you'll go, oh, should I be telling this? Instead of giving it balls, for want of a better phrase, yeah. and, uh, and doing it. So avoid contentious subjects. And above all else, you know what? I sound, this sounds so awful, but enjoy it. Remember, you're in a job that people would kill to be in. And if you enjoy it, then that will transmit. And if you go on and be meek and think, oh, God, I can't be bothered, or, you know, you're thinking, oh, you're going through the roll, that will transmit as well. So you must go out every single time and enjoy it. Thank you for listening to this Cabaret Secrets podcast. If you've got any comments or questions, please visit cabaretsecrets.com where you'll also find details of the Cabaret Secrets book, an indispensable guide on how to create your own show, travel the world, and get paid to do what you love.